Welcome back, my lovely people. I just want to thank you guys for being you. I would not continue and create this content if it wasn't for your guys' supportive comments and love. Today, we're going to create our very own teleportation hack that can store any position, then teleport back, back to that at a later point. Just like in Skate Free, where you hold left button and Oh, you didn't play Skate Free. Okay, but you get the point. We can save a position and then teleport back to them at a later time. If you like content like this, then make sure to subscribe and leave a like. It means a whole lot and it takes only a second to do. You are also invited to join the Discord. Before you try this on your own game, make sure to research the terms of agreement. Welcome to today's showcase. Let's take a look at the end product or application that you will have at the end of this tutorial. So, I have the game Assault Cube, you have your own game or Assault Cube, and we have our source project that we can click on run. And we have this cool little menu, this beautiful menu. We have the save current position, which we can click on, and he will teleport to that position. So we saved somewhere over there, and now we can click on teleport to save point one, and he teleports to that location. Let's move to a different place, like here. This is a cool place. We want, we would want to teleport here. So let's save this position as well. Save, and now we move down. We drop down and then we click on the teleport. So we teleported to this location. We can teleport wherever we want, just face through whatever. So you can do a lot of things with this. It's up to your imagination what you create after this. So enjoy this tutorial now. I'll see you guys later. Welcome to the tutorial. We will open our game. I've chosen a salt cube. You will have yours. The logic will still be the same. So we will find the coordinates for our character. We will do that by finding the Z axis and then tracing back to the original coordinates. So we open sheet engine and then we search for an unknown value. But the data type will be a float. If you don't find any results, you can try a double if you're 64 bit. But it should be a float most of the time. Now that we have searched for our unknown value, we will increase the height of our position by jumping on some boxes, then search for increased value. What we do after that is move the character to a lower position by dropping off the boxes then search for decreased value. We, we repeat this, go up, search for increased, go down, search for decreased, until we have a low amount of addresses left. So repeat this. I have hotkeys for the commands. You can add them in the settings, but just go down, search for decreased, jump on the boxes, search for increased, until we have just a small amount of addresses left. All right, now we have just a couple of addresses. We will check these white addresses, dynamic ones, and freeze them. We should be stuck to the ground and able to jump if they're the correct z-axis. And as you can see, we're stuck to the ground. So if we unselect them one by one, we should see which one is the correct one. So it isn't the first one. Let's go to the next one. And the next one seems to be stuck. So we know it's the second one and it's the z-axis of our position. Now that we have the z-axis, we can find the two other axes pretty easily because they are really close in memory. So we will just subtract the size of our float for in hex and we should get the next axis. So we subtract 4 and we get the y-axis. We subtract 4 again and we get the x-axis. So we have the whole coordinate if we subtract. 8 in hex from 
our C position and we will pointer scan for this. We are going to use pointer scans because we want a static way, a method that doesn't break when we restart the game of getting the address of our character's coordinates. So we will pointer scan with the max level of offsets being three. You can change this to something higher if you don't get any results. And we will perform this search. Now that we have performed the search, we would have quite a lot of pointers. So we will restart the game, still have the pointer screen up. And when we have restarted the game, we will find the address once again. So we will just find it like before and I will time lapse this. So see you guys in a second. I have now found the address again, but I would have to use the calculator to get the full address because the pointer scan won't work with subtractions in the text input. So we just take the calculation, put it in the calculator, get the address, remove the space, and then search for the new address within the pointer scan. I accidentally closed down the pointer scan, so let me open it up with the memory viewer tools and then pointer scan. You can find your file from pre previous here, so don't worry if you also closed it down. When we have the pointer scan open again, we will rescan for new address. We will put the address that we got from the calculator here and we should now have less results. Now we only have 89 pointer paths and you will take one that has a low amount of offsets and if it has the base address .exe in it, it's probably better as well. But pick one that looks good and double click it to add it to the address table. We will also write it down, the address and the offsets into the notepad. We will use this in the project later. Now that we have found our address and offset, we will go into Visual Studio and create a new console project. Don't worry about the GUI part, we will add that later. It will be the .NET 6 version, very important, the .NET 6 framework. The first thing we will do is go into the NuGet packages and install the following packages. Make sure to use the same versions of these NuGet packages as me. Imguinet with the version 1.8971. Then 6labors.imageSharp version 302. Then we have veldrid.imgui version 5.72.0. After that we have the vortis.mathematics version 1.6.2. The last GUI NuGet package will be the clickable transparent overlay. We will install the 6.2.1 version. The last package we will install is the SWED32 or SWED64 package. This will handle the memory operations. So if you installed the SWED32 library, we will have to go into options and change the build the platform target 86. If you have 64-bit, install the SWED64 and change it to 64 in platform target. So we will actually start by creating a new class and call it save point. This will store the location and the title of a save point. So we will store a vector free, a 3D coordinate and the title, a string. Will be to add some usings. This will include the packages we installed and then we will create a namespace because I don't have one. We will also create a class program. This will inherit the overlay and 
we will have to implement a render method. So we will just generate it and then we will also create our static void main. Now that we have our main and render method, we can start developing our application. So we will want to have a list of our previous save points so we can teleport to them. We will create a new list of these save points inside of the class. We will also create a new instance of the sweat library with the process name. So you can see it in the pointer or you can go directly into sheet engine and see the process there. Just remember that the window name isn't always the process name. Next up will be two int pointers that will hold the value of the module base or we had ecclient.exe and then the second int pointer will hold the position address. And when we have these two int pointer variables, we can store the module base by using the sweat.getModule base and our main module or acclient.exe, then our position address by reading the pointer of our module base plus the base address and then the additional offset. Remember to always add the offset outside of the pointer reading because it's the last offset and we don't want to return the actual value as our address. We will also create a new instance of the program and start it. This is because the render method doesn't run otherwise. Okay, so the first method that we will create is the save current position, but we will need another return method for this to work. So we will actually create another method called get current play position. This will return a vector free and we will use the sweat library to read a vector and use our position address and return the current position. We will use this in the save current position to store a vector free, then add it to our save points. But we will need a title, so I'll just create a dummy title by using save point plus and then the count. So the first save point will be save point one and so on. Then we add it to the list with the new values. Next up will be the teleport to position and we will take a vector free position and then use sweat.write vector, use our position address again, and then the new position. So we will teleport the player to this position. The final thing to do will be to render our imgui window that will allow us to press a button to save a save point and then add buttons for each save point so we can use them to teleport to their corresponding position. So here we have the save current position button which calls the save current position function. Then we have a loop which loops through our save points and creates their corresponding buttons with the save point dot title. Then we just call our teleport to position. Pretty easy stuff, right? Our teleport mod, run it, and we have this, this little beautiful imgui window. That was a large window, let's uh, minimize it a bit, like that. Let's move to a position that we want to store. So let's uh, store this position when we stand here. We click on the save current position. And now you can see that we have a point or a save point teleport to save point one. We can move the character now to example, for example, here. We can save this position as well. But when we click on the save point one, we teleport to that position. So teleport, save point two, we're here again. We can. Let's, here is a cool place. We want to, we want to save this place and we just press our save point button and we can move around these 
flawlessly. So we can use save points, we can teleport to wherever we want, and this is a pretty good or a pretty fun project. So I hoped that you guys like this, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. So remember to subscribe to join the Sweds C Shop family, join the Discord, write a comment, do your thing. 21, do your thing. Alright, see you guys.